we are going to start the topic elements of geometry what does it mean and then what it signifies why we have to read the geometry first if we understand carefully if you see any natural figure or if you see the nature we are observing so many things suppose if a building construction is there first we will have to select the site but the site may be either it may be four sided figure or it may have so many dimensions it may be there suppose it may be looking like a pentagon or sometimes the site may be looking like a hexagon or any other figure but the builder what he will do is according to his own convenience he will restructure the total things suppose if we take this figure it is a four sided figure it is a five sided figure it is a six sided figure sometimes what will happen the figures may look in a different way that implies two sides are parallel but some dimensions are with some some sides are not equal therefore these type of figures how we are going to derive how we are going to get this how to choose okay what are the things what exactly we need from this how these things are going to give us some concrete results suppose if i want to construct a house generally nowadays astrologers are so many people says that a site is our best site where it is having the four equal sides or sometimes if it is going to be rectangle suppose if it is a pentagon site then how to do it naturally they may suggest that you leave this portion and go for this but what happened to this portion then what we have to do this if you see any construction in the whole world it is having somehow or other some geometrical application it is there suppose if you take any church if you see the church is going to look like this naturally what will happen this is going to be we are calling it as a tomb this we are calling it as a base and like this but from where these concepts have derived mathematically it is having so great significance therefore to identify the areas or to measure the angles or to find out anything from this if we want to derive certain things naturally these figures are going to be useful for example if you take the taj mahal if you see there a beautiful land and then beautiful construction but how each side is having equal sides are there in this some monuments and the great monuments are all, all almost all are geometrical figures but this geometry is a word which is derived from greek that is called a geo geo as well as measure therefore geo basically speaks about the geo speaks about it is called ge geometry geometry means generally g e o m e t r y there are two words are there in it geo is one word metry is good. metry is going to be the measurement geo is going to be considered as a total global therefore we if we want to measure the whole thing geometry is going to be useful for example if i want to measure the area of this particular figure let us call it as this is we are calling it as a pentagon what we will do is we will take this one portion as one side one figure this portion is going to be other figure then we will find out the area of this triangle portion we will find out the area of this squared part then we will add these two suppose the same manner if i want to find out for the hexagon naturally what will happen this i can divide it into the four parts this totally two parts which i can divide this is one portion this is other portion this is other portion now i have to find out the area of this i have to find out the area of this simultaneously i have to find out the area of this adding these three areas we are going to get the total area of the hexagon the same manner if you take this trapezium naturally what will happen this is going to be the one triangle this is one triangle this is going to be the one four sided figure therefore we will find out the area of this we will find out the area of this and then we will find out the area of this then we, if we add these three naturally we are going to get the total that implies geo basically speaks about the greek word which is defined from total global or the total figure can be measured with respect to the some measurement therefore geometry basically speaks about that but who is the originator for this for this 
Euclid is one of the great mathematician who identified how to measure this figures and then how to calculate the areas and then what are the conditions what are the postulates to be formulated regarding with regarding to these particular figures euclidean geometry started around 325 bc and then euclid wrote near about 13 books in this he mainly focused on the geometrical portions how to measure the jewels and then how to identify the angles which jewels has to taken place and then what is to be done in this the elements of euclid geometry is completely discussing about various different types of figures various different types of angles how to measure this one he wrote near about 13 books and completely he formulated certain postulates and then he started his career or he started writing his own books around 325 BC to near about 216 BC. Therefore, it is one of the great contribution made by the Euclid to the society so that as on today, whatever we are using it as a geometrical applications, particularly in mechanical engineering, in civil engineering, in any architecture or all these things are going to be the contributions contribution made by the Euclid to the society. Now we are going to start with what is a point, what is the surface and then how many types of figures are there and then how to do this. Now we will think about all these areas. The geometry starts with point. A point is a position. In this particular geometry we are going to start with a point. Suppose if I take any point here, point is in, it is movable, it can be located any place in the space, but it is not having any dimension or it is not having any magnitude, but only it is a source which direction it has to move. Suppose if it is moving towards one particular side of it, this is called one dimension. If it is moving perpendicular to this, this is other dimension. Let us take this particular point, if I take this particular dimension, let us call it as x, this is called y if I take it. The total surface formulated with regard to, let us consider this point is O, this is called O, we are calling it as x, O, y plane. This is having the two dimension, therefore we can say that it is called two dimensional surface. Generally, we have three types of figures are there. The first one is called two dimensional space, two dimensional space. Now generally a space can be defined it as a collection of this so many number of points, but the space need not to be either a rectangle or a square or it need not to be any particular form. It may be looking like a circle. It may be looking like a pentagon or it may be looking like any other figure. There is no specified restriction. But the problem is a space is a consist a space is one which consists of so many different points. For example, if I take a two dimensional figure, if I take it, if I take this is a square is a two dimensional figure. If I take the, if I take any coordinate system, if I draw any figure like this, this is also called a two dimensional figure which we are calling it as a hexagon. Suppose the same manner we can draw it as an octagon or we can draw it as an anagon like that we can draw so many figures on this. 